Now on to our commencement speakers. Today I have the honor of introducing four four speakers, one that is a familiar face to our school, and the others are the best and brightest that our school has to offer. Each year the seniors choose the individual that will address their class at this ceremony. The tradition has been that this individual has a title program or a connection to the senior class. This year the seniors have chosen Mr. Ryan Miller. Buster looks at him and says, yeah, I'm good. So the ref says, fight. One second goes 
by date. Because you remember what I mean, let's cut this guy down, knock down with one second left. And so the refs and the fighters back to their corners. And then you can just hear, you can feel, you can, you can feel the vibe of the stadium. I mean, everybody was thinking, everybody's talking, this is it. Here comes Mike. Us, the rank, we survive, this is it, it's going to be over soon. The Buster does survive the ninth round. In the tenth round, he knocked Mike Tyson out. And he was a new heavyweight champion of the world. Pulled off one of the biggest upsets in sports history. And during the post-fight interview, Buster Douglas started to cry. He started sobbing, he was weeping like a little baby. When a reporter asked him, this reporter said, how were you able to win that fight when nobody fight had a chance? And Buster said, because of my mom. God bless her heart. Because of my mom, God bless her heart. You see, 23 days before that fight, Buster Douglas' mom died of a sudden stroke. And on that night, when she was alive though, she would walk around the streets, she was running the marketplaces, she was going to the salons and beauty shops, and she was telling everybody that her son was going to be the next big champion of the world. That her son was going to be my, beat Mike Tyson. And so that night, when Buster Douglas stepped into that ring, he had a purpose. And his purpose was big. His purpose was so big that it was bigger than Mike Tyson's best punch. And when he got knocked down, he had a reason to get back and stay in the fight. You see, he didn't want his mom down. He wanted to make her proud. And he wanted to prove to everyone in the world that she knew what she was talking about. And so I asked the seniors, do you have a purpose? Because here very shortly you're going to be out there and pursue those big dreams, huge dreams that you have. And I can guarantee you this, that it's not going to be a matter of if, but it's going to be when you're going to get knocked down. And do you have a purpose, a purpose that is so big that you're able to get back up and keep fighting? And so let me tell you about purpose. I know of a young lady sitting amongst you all who a little over a year ago was climbing her way to the top, literally. I mean, you were there, you remember. I mean, it was like right after the Grand March, and, and everybody's walking up, up those stairs and getting up on that stage, and you guys ready to do that dance, right? And she was on that third step, and she stepped a little awkward, and with one step, one step, this located her knee, and she went from the top to the bottom. Well, that's what it must have felt like for her. But it didn't take her long to get back into the fight. She was driven and determined not to be as good as she could have been as she was before, but that, and why? Because she had a purpose. She didn't want to let her friends down. She shared the same dream that her teammates shared with being that first girls team, that was going to bring home that state championship trophy to Archbishop Burton. And that's purpose. So you want me to tell you more about purpose? I know of a young man sitting amongst you all. A long hair <laughs> Who as a sophomore made it, made it his personal mission to change the culture of the weight room that's in our program. I heard him. I heard him in the locker room say that. And during his junior year, he was on a kickoff return and, and, and was one, one misstep. Injured his knee. He sat there his junior year on the sidelines and in the stands watching his teammates play. But he came to me shortly after that and his crutches and his knee bracing. He said, Coach, he said, Coach, I can't play this year. I said, Yeah, no. He said, but coach, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you that I will play my senior year. I will play next year. And I said, yeah, I know. And he not only played one sport, but he played three sports. He played every single practice and every single game with great purpose. So you remember those stories, and you remember your own personal stories, seniors, of when in your lifetimes you've gotten tough, and things haven't gone according to plan. 
And you've been able to find a purpose enough to be able to get back and stay, get back up and stay in the fight. You're going to need to know how to do that with the those big dreams that you have. So I really enjoyed my time as a student at Bergen. I mean, I was part of a great, cl great class like this. I would say probably the second best class in Bergen history, right? <laughs> Not going to debate with these guys about that. But Bergen gave me a lot. I mean, I had the opportunity to do multiple sports, and that's something that I really you know, but I've been very passionate about for a long time. I had the opportunity to go around and do other things. I mean, I had, I had an opportunity to play a part in the, in the musical. I had, a, I had an opportunity to be in the choir, and I couldn't even sing. But I could have done that at other schools. Bergen gave me that opportunity. Bergen also had some great teachers and coaches that found me with that in my life. Bergen even gave me my wife. Amen. <laughs> Importantly, this, Bergen gave me the foundation for my faith. When I was in eighth grade, I had a teacher by the name of Sister Liz. And at the end of every class, Sister would get the lights and she'd play this relaxing music and she'd have to put us, put our heads down and close our eyes. And she would have us pray. And she would teach us how to pray. And then when we were done praying, she'd have us write it. She'd have us show it. I don't know exactly when or exactly how, but that is the time in my life where I really understood, I really felt that God loved me, and that God wanted to have a personal relationship with me. And I'll be the first to tell you that my spiritual relationship hasn't always been perfect. There's been many ups and downs, and I think that's typical of all of us. But I'm going to tell you this, guys. As I get older and I get wiser, I'm going to tell you, you need to have personal relationship with the Lord. And the Lord wants to have a personal relationship with you. But you guys are young, you know, you don't right now know all the things that you need. You know, like right now you think you need a $300 watch. Not, not, not I need an Apple watch. Oh, but son, son, that's like, it's like a $300 watch. You really need that? Yeah, yeah, I need it. I need it. I mean, it, it, it's a big letter. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, and then it also, it'll also track my steps. I might get really nervous. And my blood pressure is going to tell me to relax and breathe. Oh, okay. Well, son, son, how about we do this? How about we get you a $30 watch? Or better yet, how about we get you a $3 watch? Because all you really need is a watch that tells you time. Right, with your parents? You have been there yet? You haven't been there yet? Or like, here's one some needs, but like, here's another one. You guys all think you need hot chip. You mean you need hot chip. Yeah, I need hot chip. What? Why can't you have cold chicken or warm chicken? No, I need hot chicken. You need hot chicken. Tell me about this hot chicken. That's for my boy. Eli, that's for you. <laughs> Eli, I mean, uh, this is all over with me. I can get one more in the night. I can get the middle. Mr. K, we can get Mr. K in there too. Uh, we got one more left. But here's my point to everyone. Here's the, here's the point I'm trying to get home when I can, I can promise you this, that like, as you go through life, and you go through life's experiences, you're once, and your needs are going to definitely change. And I can tell you that you need to have a relationship with the Lord. The sooner you do, the better, life, the better your life will be. The better your life will be. Um, you guys have. And, 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 and how do you do that? You know, how do you have a relationship with the Lord? You've got to find time to pray. Maybe you start with 10 minutes a day. And you learn to pray when things are good. And you learn to pray when things are not so good. But here's the fact. That if you can't find time to pray, then you're just a lot busier than God that was intended you to be. And so you guys have probably heard me say this in math class, and maybe you can finish it for me. 
I've told you this a lot. I've taught it now. In math, seeing is... Seeing is... Seeing is believing. You're right. In math, seeing is believing. Remember that on Pi Day? When I said Pi is 3.14 million pi. I mean, how is it? How did somebody say it's that? And then we took a circle. Maybe it was a trash can or something. Maybe a clock. And we measured the distance around. And then we divided it by the diameter and measured the diameter. And I was able to show you that this was round circle, but my diameter was 3.14. And you were like, oh, yeah, I see. Because seeing is believing in math. Now, when we believe, but we don't have to see, that's called having faith. And that's what Bergen has given you a foundation for your faith. I know it did for me. But I don't know if I knew that when I was a student, when I was sitting there, I got it right now. But when I needed it the most, it was there. And so Caleb, I'm wondering, I, this is a long shot, but you know, you have that, you have that ball that you always were bouncing around your senior year. You do, he does. I figured he did. <laughs> I figured he did. I, you know, I would see Caleb bouncing this ball as soon as he got out of his car, he was on his way to school. And then he would leave school going on open campus and he would be bouncing this ball. There were even times where he was in the locker room before a basketball game bouncing this ball. And now that I think of it, this reminds me of all of you. Let me explain. Does anybody have a program here?
thank you for choosing to be a part of our group. Thank you for making this a better place. God bless you. You guys are there. You guys are going to do great things. We love you, class of 2019.